competitions. Yeah. I have, I, I, I have no, no uh, really firm opinion about it. I have not been in too many. I've been in a few. I How about the Börsendorfer Prize first? Uh, of all? The Börsendorfer Prize is, is always I voted for the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it was at the time when I was on the, on the jury, they gave it to somebody who started out with the Mozart uh, Abu Dirish Mama uh, variations and played them very beautifully. And I thought, well, that, that's the end of that, you know, when I mean, you don't win a competition with Mozart that's variations. And you got it, you know. <laughs> and somebody who no, played come on. fireworks all over the place didn't get it, you know. And for one piece? No, not for one piece. I mean, they, but the whole program was on the refined and, and, and very, very neat and beautiful, uh, but not the uh, not mm-hmm. exciting type. And so, I mean, the, 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 you know, and um, that's... You, you, it is a competition, though. It is a competition, and it's a very mm-hmm. prestigious competition, and you get a burden of a piano which you can pick out among the available pianos at the time, and it's mm-hmm. very, very uh, high. Uh, and you won? In, in, in I won it way, way, way back in 1930. Something, I guess. Did you get a piano? I got a piano, and and the the conditions of the of the award are that it is to uh, be awarded to a worthy, um, uh, not not wealthy, uh, best graduate of the last two year period of the Vienna Conservatory. Mm-hmm. So you have to be a student at the, mm-hmm. at the Hochschule. Mm-hmm. And uh, that it is to further the musical atmosphere and culture of Austria. Mm-hmm. Consequently, the piano cannot be exported. Uh, if the uh, man who is awarded uh, uh, the piano moves away from Austria, the piano is re uh, is bought back by the firm, you see, mm-hmm. by the person of her. And uh, so that was the case in my case since I had, li- had to leave Austria, you mm-hmm. see. Now, of course, they were not very enthusiastic at the time to have to fork out money yeah. when, when the Nazis were mm-hmm. there, and they knew they wouldn't sell any pianos for, mm-hmm. for, for a long time because they were not uh, in with, uh, with the regime as uh, Bechstein had been was yeah. who yes with the Nazis with the Nazis yes mm-hmm. and they were not and one knew they were Catholic very Catholic but and uh, uh, one Beckstein was a Beckstein was was a Nazi was a Nazi yeah. uh, I mean played footsie with them yeah. and got all sorts of benefits personally so they weren't very enthusiastic about having to buy it back but they did they gave me money forget uh, I don't remember how much and. Uh, so then, then I left, and the piano was then sort of re- repossessed by them. Uh, I had been uh, in with them before because I taught the sons of the um, British ambassador in Vienna, and the ambassador at one time wanted to buy a version of a piano and asked me <coughs> to go and select one, and I did. And the customary thing is then to give the one who selects a commission. And I refused the commission, oh even prior to having that, having that award. Mm-hmm. You see, even prior to having that, it was unethical. And, and, and Who I was the ambassador from England? Phipps, uh, something uh, mm-hmm. Phipps. And Mrs. Phipps was a very, very interesting woman. And the two boys were not too bad. I mean, they were not no great, uh, no bad shakes, but they were all right. I forget the first name of that man. Very nice, very very nice. I played I played there at one time also for some reception or something like that. I, I, anyway, so um, they they liked me, you mm-hmm. see, and and so I got this I got this award and I had it for several years. Mm-hmm. It must have been 1932 or so. I would imagine. No, it can't be because I graduated. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. 1932-ish, and uh, so I got this. And then. After the Second World War, and after we, we had uh, been uh, given this, this uh, tour, you know, to lead for students and, mm-hmm. and, and so on to Vienna, she brings up the idea maybe we can now get a second-hand Wurzendorfer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
when we came there, they remembered me and all that, and was of the half ha, second, and there's no, don't exist, nobody ever gives one back, you know, it <laughs> yeah. lasts forever, out of the question. <laughs> then we went to Naples, yeah, for a year, and there suddenly came a letter, the ambassador of India wants to sell his business of, uh, or give uh, and buy another, a new one or something like that. Maybe that's available. But then, of course, uh, the ambassador of India changed his mind and didn't get the version of her back. So that was, again, nothing. Then she, without my knowing it, got into correspondence again and said, if, if there is uh, ever a chance, let me know about it. Uh, but I don't want uh, my husband, me, to know anything about it. <laughs> By a fluke, I did find out about it. You see, they had one, and uh, she gave the address of Mrs. Christini to, to, to mm -hmm. the, the middleman, so I wouldn't know about it. And I know, I know it, about her secret to uh -huh. from your surprise party. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and by a fluke, and by a postman who, who for the first change, acted intelligent but not smart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the letter was transferred here and I opened it because it came from Brazil, so I knew about it. Anyway, then we went on this, on, 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 uh, went another tour, I think it was a visit to Vienna, and, and anyway, so I saw this uh, piano there, uh, and it's by now 48 years old, I think, and then it was 35 years old or something like that. And, uh, I loved it, and uh, they fixed it up for a minimal mm -hmm. charge, you know, and didn't charge me any for the piano. I paid, I paid at that current currency, I think, twelve hundred dollars or something like that, for a completely new, mm -hmm. new inside, and they shipped it, and uh, the transportation cost of I think three hundred dollars, and then when it was set up uh, on its legs here, it was a little out of tune, but one could immediately sit down and play it. You know, it was incredible. However, uh, there was still a, a quirk because uh, it went by seaway to Chicago, see, by the canal and all that sort of yeah. thing. And on the night before the piano was to arrive here by truck, the tuner called me and said, one of the trucks that is shipping pianos from Chicago got on fire. And watch out when you get the piano that it isn't I are damaged. So I thought, ah, oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> but it wasn't that clock, it was another clock. And uh, the piano was in perfect perfect condition, and uh, so here it is. And I had, in the meantime, uh, put new hammers uh, in, uh, and uh, so that's it. Is it similar to the piano you want? It's no, it is a or? little smaller. It is a little smaller, but it is it is a very beautiful bit. Yeah. Yeah. Was the contest r rounds elimination type thing? What do you mean? The, the person go for competition. Com competition as such. Yeah. Well, you presented a, 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 a recital program of which they then picked. I see. Uh -huh. And that was the decision was made on that basis. On that basis, yes. Yes. And I think it was about board, and there was no preference for a uh, Swiss versus a Bulgarian or anything yeah. of that sort. That is not uh, not the case. Uh, on the Casella contest in Naples, yeah. uh, which you, for which you were uh, a for which I was uh, uh, on the jury, yes, which was uh, chairman was uh, Guido Agosti. Yeah, uh, and uh, it was. Uh, Influence was being exerted. There was a telegram from the ministry mm -hmm. to promote one of their <laughs> babies or something. I don't know what the connection I was. It was yeah. the, yes, the, the nephew of the cardinal. And, and as I found out afterwards, that is always counterproductive, you see, because the jury will then uh, they will, yeah. absolutely not listen to it. But it is customary in Italy, you see. <laughs> You know. yeah. And uh, the winner was a student of Vincenzo Vitale, whom I had and replaced. A you see. Of you. Uh, well, so to say, I mean, yeah. I taught it for one year. We are still in correspondence. And on and on. That was uh, Campanella, exactly. And he, he made a very substantial career mm -hmm. since. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would say this was a good judgment. The, the runner up was. Uh, 
Stockman, who is William Dockman, William Dockman yes, mm -hmm. who is a very good pianist and, and uh, is teaching, uh, was teaching at uh, Michigan. Michigan, exactly, and is then, uh, was then in Texas, I think, what, what he's doing now, I do not know. He was the runner up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, he was at the University of Texas. And yes, he was. Yes, yes. yes. He mm -hmm. may have been a student of this uh, front valley. Yes, yes, I think that's true. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And it was an interesting. In fact, a student, Larry Campbell, you may remember, student Mr. Shuck, right. studied with him somewhere uh, along. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so. So yeah. Yeah, that was a good judgment. You. I thought. I think so. It looked terribly like it was a, you know. Underhanded affair because mm -hmm. because it was a student of somebody on the jury, you know, yeah. and, and Vincenzo Vitale is a pusher, mm -hmm. and and he looked uh, awfully as if as if he had bribed them uh, with, with uh, spaghetti or something, you know, <laughs> but, but it wasn't, you know, and I'm convinced it wasn't. So that was that was that contest. Then I was at one time uh, for the what was that the the, the National MTNA. MTNA, yes, I was on the national mm -hmm. board, yeah. and there I gave, we gave three, a three-man committee. Um, uh, Richard Cass was on the committee. Who the third one was, I forget. Uh, we gave the first prize to a fellow with a Polish name, and I can't remember it, who is now teaching somewhere, who was a student of um, James Avery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the second prize was um, uh, a fellow by the name of Buckel, same spelling as sure. this. Yeah, you know, it's Hans. Hans, Hans yes, yes, who is no longer here, who yeah. is now in California someplace. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the wrong judgment because mm -hmm. uh, because this other fellow who played very very neatly never made anything. You see, mm -hmm. I mean, further his mm -hmm. teaching and, and that's it. Was well, at least as far as I know. Well, Bobra has, has a little bit of success and he's an awful nice guy and it was a little embarrassing then to have him here, <laughs> as we call it, you yeah. know, and knowing that I had watered him down and so on. But, it was, but at that time it was my honest opinion, you see. Then another contest that I judged was uh, this festival in Spokane, Washington. And that's one of those contests that are uh, very nicely run, you know, mm -hmm. very well organized, but I'm perfectly idiotic because any instrument can compete against any other instrument. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's one of those. Now I think that is really uh, something that should should be yeah. abolished by law. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> the funny thing is that in the finals there were two. One was an organist and the other was a, an accordion player. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you, I gave it to the accordion player. <laughs> <laughs> she was a performer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the organist played the organ, you know. <laughs> For better or worse. And it was very funny, it was that girl played, you know. <laughs> so, uh, now, now I'm going to Provo. Utah, as you know. You for know. the Baja. Or for the Baja, yes. As a, so as a judge. I, yeah, as a judge, and, 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 and in connection with two lectures, they didn't give me a yeah. master class, but uh, yeah. I get two lectures. Anyway, so, but my conclusion is, I mean, contests that are not confined to at least a group of instruments, you see, like, mm -hmm. like oh yeah, another, another contest, the Indianapolis Symphony had a contest for, uh, uh, at one time, at least, where they wanted organists to play with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. See, there are only two and a half concertos for organ yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and orchestra. And <laughs> both uh, entrants played the uh, Pulak concerto, mm -hmm. yes? And the first one started out, it starts out with big chords, you know, played and so mm -hmm. good, all right. Then comes the second one, he starts out with a big chord, and you know after the second measure this was it. Yeah. Even on a mechanical instrument like this. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> it's incredible. Uh -huh. I didn't think it was possible. It's yeah. plain organ, you know, uh -huh. both, both cases. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an eye opener. But let me ask you this, do you think a contest, if let's say we're in a contest, is it best if everyone plays the same repertoire or well, very I, similar uh, repertoire? Uh, yes, I think it, uh, several things. A contest where 
different instruments are played out against each other. Are, 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 yeah, same. Uh, a required piece would be desirable, though it is terrible to have to listen to it. I listened to the Bach G major French suite 53 times in Naples. See, under Frederick Nice. And, and I think if you, you crawl up the, the, the walls, you see. However, half asleep and drunk as you are at the 44th time, there comes somebody who mm -hmm. plays and has to listen and, 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 and you wake up again, you know? So it works it's out. Hard. It's yeah. hard on the jury, very hard. But I do think that, that in, in order to make it more or less uh, objective, it would be desirable to have a required piece. Yes, yes. It should if be not not necessarily. Not a, not necessarily a piece, but something complex. And not all of the repertoire. And not all of the repertoire. No, yeah. I don't think so. What would be very desirable and would would uh, a clear the name of juries and be of great benefit to the contestants would be if they would get the written criticism. Uh, I think it should be any test, and I've tried to maintain that in my in mm -hmm. my teaching too. Any test should be a learning experience, mm -hmm. not only a pile of nerves. Mm -hmm. And and if if one could at least jot down three words, you see, of, of criticism, mm -hmm. uh, it would do away with this, this was politics that I didn't get mm -hmm. it, you know, and it would uh, soothe uh, rough feelings and, and, and avoid some of the traumas that are mm -hmm. necessarily connected with, with uh, contests. When do you advise a student to enter a competition? Uh, depending on what competition it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the there yeah. I am rather in, you see, a, a different opinion from this uh, uh, nice, nice harsh criticism of teachers who, who try to, to break students and then build them up, you know. Mm -hmm. I think if you enter a competition, this is professionalism and, and you better get, get used to, to being hurt. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm rather in favor of it and, and, and doing it early again. Now that with, uh, with the Queen Elizabeth as the first competition you enter, and not to start out with a Hamaglavir Sonata, because yeah. it's, it's, it's hopeless. Yeah. It's hopeless. And, and to build up very, very carefully for it and, and, and have trial, trial uh, performances and all that sort of thing. And yes. But, uh, Do you believe in contest for the experience of it? No, I think that is a... That is a uh, misdemeanor. You cannot take musicians' time on a jury to, to just uh, uh, give yes. little Susie an experience. Uh, yeah. uh, no, <laughs> no, I think that is, that is wrong. The, yeah. teacher, the teacher must be, must be uh, fairly confident that, that she would make a, he or she would make a decent showing. I've heard this tape contest, you see now, as I mm -hmm. told you, I think about yeah. uh, yesterday. And there were obviously a few people, you know, who were sent to, to play uh, for the experience. Now, of course, you turn the tape off after after six measures, you see, yeah. because you know this is absolutely hopeless. And uh, it is it is um, on the one hand necessary to give the 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 imprint, uh, a chance to 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 show his wares. One shouldn't cut mm -hmm. him off uh, immediately because that is an implied criticism and mm -hmm. and. and uh, Towards him, but on the other hand, usually after after two lines of of a piece, one knows yeah. this or is. Yeah. You know. What advice would you have to the students in the competition? I suppose one, the worst sin is to bore the jury. You've the got, worst you've sin got is to psych out the jury. Yeah, yeah. You, the the the, the uh, since this seems to be one of the very few avenues still more or less open for young young artists, I, I would in general encourage if somebody is really serious and, 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 and wants to have some kind of a career. You mean uh, rather than the old patronage systems of, of starting a career? And well, if you get an old lady to pay for you, that's better. Yes. <laughs> it hurts much less. <laughs>
<laughs> there are only two ways to make a career. Either, either you have, have a, an angel or to, to win competitions. That's, that's, yeah. that's all that's left. Mm -hmm. Because the old impresario system, where, ah, where yeah, yeah. somebody will put up money because he believes in that young, in that young man, you know, and he will eventually make money out, out of him. You see, he, he has a slave who will, mm -hmm. who will eventually turn out to be a gold man. That doesn't exist anymore. Like Hermann Wolf and exactly. Europe. Exactly, yes. and Europe did. Uh, but that I really don't think it uh, exists anymore. You, you plunk down money first of all. Russians have a pretty organized competition system. Yes, uh, yes, yes. They, they really try them like they weed them out and uh, like racehorses. They send them all over the, mm -hmm. over the place to, to, to play that program to smooth it out. We don't have it. And, and mm -hmm. that is why Americans don't always, not, don't often mm -hmm. show up uh, as well as, as, as we, we could. A lot of people think competitions are are great, you should go into them working like hell, expecting nothing, and if you get a chance to give a performance, that's yeah, wonderful. You don't go into a competition expecting nothing. You, you tell people that, and you, you make yourself believe it, but it isn't so. You that's go right. to win, yeah. and you are served to the quick if you don't. So let's not try and let's fool not ourselves. Let's not fool ourselves. <laughs> you don't. Just like I don't believe that anybody walks out on stage without without having his pants. <laughs> 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 you you give me a, 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 a performer with a constipated performer and I pay a thousand dollars. It doesn't exist. <laughs> This Bauhaus thing is on, starts on the 23rd of June. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Silverman of the Piano Quarterly wrote an article on, on mm -hmm. his experience as an observer. Mm -hmm. I think he was there. What are you looking for? Uh, what a yeah, personality. Yeah. Personality. By, uh, you mean something different, something that distinguishes? Something that distinguishes, yes. Yeah. Something that makes me sit up and, 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 and this. I, I, you see, my bitter experience here. I, 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 with so many different styles of piano playing, I've tried uh, not to have preconceived notions how a piece goes. Now, of course, I, 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 I think how I would want my students, or God forbid myself, to play the piece, you see. But if somebody has an entirely different, different idea, as long as it's within reason, and I hope, uh, I hope I can judge that, and he can do what he sets out to do, yes? And, and, and gives me something to, to chew on, so to say. I, I will buy it. What he sets out to do, you mean to be convincing? To be convincing, what for what he's doing mm -hmm. with, with that composition. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to be, to be led Catholic in my taste, let's say, mm -hmm. okay? And and this is all presuming technical proficiency and... No, one doesn't yeah. talk about technique anymore. Everybody plays the piano well enough these days. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This mm -hmm. is just yeah. no, no longer interesting, you mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Whether he, he whittles the finger one way or whittles the finger another way is absolutely mm -hmm. uninteresting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going there to study the fingerings or the, or the wrist position. Stage presence, manners, things like that? Mm -hmm. I yeah, I think they, they do count to some extent. Well, you can't help it. I think that, uh, the, that uh, you see, we had, we had concerto contests behind screens. Uh, that, that, I think, is no, no. Because why does one still go to concerts and doesn't yeah. listen to recordings only? You know? yes. Recordings are better. Yes. There's no question about it. But when one wants to see the guy sweat, mm -hmm. it, it contributes mm -hmm. something to the, to the enjoyment <laughs> or, 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 or whatever you want to call it. You see. Yes, the visual aspect I think is important. It shouldn't be that uh, if somebody walks out like like Napoleon and then and then a place like <laughs> Susie uh, Jones, well, <laughs> that, 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 that wouldn't. If recordings hurt or helped or what what kind of recordings yeah. have on the one hand uh, broadened the. Uh, knowledge of, mu of, of mu acquaintance with music, not knowledge, but acquaintance with music of an incredible mass of people, yes? Mm -hmm. They have made music schools in the sticks 
possible, yes? Mm -hmm. We couldn't have a music school in Bloomington, Indiana, of all places if there were no recordings, yes? Mm -hmm. How could we? Uh, they have uh, made the general public super critical. Uh, the more somebody listens to recordings, the more critical he gets of performance. Yes, mm -hmm. and very few people are smart enough to say, yes, on a recording you can sneak uh, mm -hmm. tapes together, you see, mm -hmm. and that's not the real performance, and the real performance will always have a wrong note here or there or something mm -hmm. uh, that is not as controlled as a record can be. And so the worst people do to have live performances judged are record buffs. <laughs> <laughs> they, are the, they are cruel, they are absolutely cruel, yes? Yeah. Uh, I've made that experience very, very frequently here. Uh, the, uh, they have set, records have set a standard that is almost impossible to, to reach, and they have thereby, have the, on the one hand, uh, have the healthy effect of narrowing down the market for live performers. Only the very best can even hope to live up to the recordings. Uh, they have, uh, on the other hand, uh, shifted the emphasis to note perfection mm -hmm. and, and uh, with an attendant loss of, of devil may care mm -hmm. freedom, mm -hmm. yes, so that many performers sound, sound exactly the same as, as yeah. many other performers. Mm -hmm. uh, they have um, caused students not to be musically literate. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Because first thing a student does is go down to the record library and listen to the recording, yes? Yeah, and they, have, they are not preserving music for eternity. Because A, the record, as soon as, as, as the man is, is uh, dead, uh, if he's not posting in, the records are no longer available. And it's peculiar. I've always thought that's peculiar. I yes, yes. Know, it's it's, it's an true. industry, and 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 uh, they yeah. they will uh, discontinue the line, you know. So and then, and that's one thing. And then, of course, the style of playing changes, and and records of of, of nowadays will be as as obsolete as as records of, of 1915 are. I don't feel that on the piano records. They, you really do lose a lot. I don't think it sounds like a lot. It does not sound really like a lot. Of and I don't yes. know if I'm hypersensitive to me or what, but I do, it, to me the tonal quality is different. No, of course. Yeah, 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 but yeah. it does not give the whole frequency, and they, they can tell me, tell me uh, any number of, of uh, technical uh, mm -hmm. terms and, and, and probably the book, I mean, how little yeah. distortion, it is yeah. sound different, I mean, it's yeah. out of the box and uh, yeah. not the last thing. Partly because we miss the, the visual element, but only partly. It's yeah. really the sound that is... Or even from one seat in the hall to the next. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and, and, and yet it, ha it has the quality of a sound a little bit. Yeah. You've made a some records along, all along the way, even... The well, first my week very first here. week I was here. You see, Renardi had started uh, to record the Schubert uh, violin piano sonatas with Taubman, uh, well known uh, companies at that time. And Taubman, for some reason, couldn't continue. He was sick, he was on tour, I don't know. And so uh, we started with Sonata Three, and then the people at Columbia said, no, that's silly, I mean, to have two pianists let's do the whole thing over again, you see? And so then we played that, that recording. Uh, the three sonatinas. Three sonatinas. Yeah. And it came out in very good reviews. Mm -hmm. Very good reviews. Uh, and of course, the, the, the Nadia records are no longer available anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Because when you record, how do you, uh, how do they make you feel? Is it uh, nerve-wracking? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was different, of course, in the days when you had to record a whole side, you know, mm -hmm. and no, right, then and <laughs> right then and there, and no, no snipping of tapes, you see, and that was, that was a part of nerves, and you practiced like, like many, yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you practice, and um, because, you see, time was of the essence, I remember going with Renato to record, and out came Arao, in a fury, 
he had tried to record and nothing went that way. It didn't, didn't go, you know, and he was made at himself and the world and everything. Nothing had gone, you know. That can happen. Yeah. But, and that was where you played the entire side, and if, if in the last 10 seconds you, you hit a wrong note, then the side was ruined, you know. <laughs> it was something. Yeah. Now, now we're getting it's back, back to that to with these, this, uh, not quadraphonic, but uh, there's a new technique of recording yes. now where you have to do that, and it supposedly sounds more alive. And uh, like yeah, what are yeah. they called? Acoustic recording. So, so, uh, so, so it's so. now back in fashion, and you have to play wrong notes. Now your manager is angry if you don't. Play yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't think it's true, but no, that's how they no. do it. I see. And then, and then, of course, I did some recordings uh, on this very, very questionable. Indiana University artist series that was simply a tape tape uh, affair. And, and you did that in the Mac? Yes. In the hall? No, in the in the recital hall. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, but then I did a, 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 a no a two two sides of a, a, a disc with uh, two people on the faculty here, both wind players. And one we had one rehearsal and then the recording. And it was the smoothest thing that you ever heard. With ever power heard. No, that was with Sharov. Leonard Sharov. Sharov. And it was the smoothest thing. I am a great believer in the tape recorder. Mm -hmm. Not so much for practicing with a tape recorder, though maybe I should have done it more. Yeah, I get so nervous with this fussing around with this, mm -hmm. with this sort of thing. It takes more time than, than to do this thing. Uh, practice mm -hmm. it over again, you know. Mm -hmm. And I flatter myself that I do hear pretty well what I'm doing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I'm listening now to old tapes at times and I play everything too fast. Everything too fast. Mm -hmm. I spoil and tell them. But anyway, but I'm a great believer in the tape recorder to record uh, and tireless. Mm -hmm. Not so much the first performance when, mm -hmm. when the student plays through as then they commentaries and criticisms, you see, because then you don't force a student to do it right then and there and put him under this terrible pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the, you avoid uh, having the student uh, say, uh, you didn't say that, you know. Yes. Or, or well, you, you, know, you know, advertising, how do you prepare students for recital? I don't prepare them, they prepare themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, um, making sure that they play not only each piece without interruption, but they play at the entire program. It's a different dimension. Mm -hmm. You may know each piece very well when you play it by itself. There is a different span of, of attention when you have to distribute your, your, your efforts over an entire evening. Uh, by uh, having them play as many rather formal pre-trial mm -hmm. uh, performances, yes? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's for your deaf old Aunt Susie uh, <laughs> or whether it's for, for 10 uh, uh, critical colleagues, you know? Mm -hmm. It is the feeling that they must have, this is it. I cannot stop and start practicing that spot because it didn't go well, yes? Mm -hmm. I think that is the decisive thing, you see, that, that they feel the pressure of I got to go through come hell or high water, yes? Uh, beyond that, I don't think one can do very much. I, I've never been of the opinion one, one, one has any effect on a student by saying, well, look, I mean, after all this will not be so, so <laughs> bad, it'll be over in a half hour and you <laughs> play this thing so often, you wonder, well, why are you afraid of it? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, you know, that doesn't cut any eyes, <laughs> not at all. Nor to completely rip them up or... or Nor completely rip them up or anything, uh, anything of that. You will be afraid. You will be afraid. <laughs> and you've got to be trained so well that you, that you can cross that bridge under fire. Yeah? And not panic. Maybe you will, but you've got to, to, to at least have a reasonable chance that you'll be that, that well mm -hmm. prepared. I have seen funny things happen. Starker had a student, very good student, I forget who it was, play and he, he 
flopped all over the place. And Starker went backstage and one heard him scream at that student. <laughs> one heard him in the hall <laughs> scream at him. The student came out and played the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I thought this would be, be the end of that. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> But what I'm convinced of is this this uh, baby talk doesn't do it. <laughs> Thank you.